Australia enjoys some of the best weather and with summer just around the corner, we've headed to Palm Beach and Sydney's northern beaches to test out four affordable convertibles. So, question is, which one is the best under the Aussie sun? Daniel, I can't believe you cheated on me. And with her, of all people. Thanks, I swear, it wasn't my fault. Irene, she just gave me this look at the Oi, dino there. and I couldn't. Thanks. What? we're not auditioning for Home and Away here. But this is Summer Bay, Tim. Look, we're here to review these four cars. Now, how about you practice your actors' voices introing these four? Oh, okay, let's do it. First, we have the Fiat 500C, the most affordable contender here, priced from just $20,000. Then we've got the world's most lovable two-seat roadster. A new Mazda MX-5 is just around the corner, but this is the 25th anniversary edition at just under 50 grand. That's around the same price as the more luxurious, less sporty, but four-seat Audi A3 convertible. It starts from 47,300. And if you want four seats, but you're on a budget, for around 10 grand less, you can have a Renault Megane CC, which unlike the Audi, even comes with a secure hardtop roof. All right, Teagues, we should get down to business. And of course, when you're driving a convertible, rain might come along. So I reckon a good test might be to see how long it takes these convertibles to get their roofs back up. Sounds like it's challenge time. Get your challenge fingers ready. Got my stopwatch ready. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Ready? One, two, three, go. All right. Oh, the MX-5 is already off to a flying start. I've only got two seats, Teagues, so this is really, oh. The Fiat looks like it's giving it a bit of a challenge there. Well, of course, the little ones will be fast. The Audi is flying as well for a four-seater. Renault roof's actually down, but the boot's still up. There goes Audi boot. It's going to be a race for the Audi and the Renault for last. Hey, Tiggs, guess what? I'm done. I'm done. First place. Winner to the MX-5. Dan, I'm surprised at just how close the race was between the Audi and the Renault. I expected Audi to smash it. Yeah, Teagues, it really was close between the four-seaters and the Megane has the heavier hardtop. The MX-5 being a two-seater, a lot quicker, and the Fiat wasn't far behind, though. Is it more sunroof than proper cabrio? Look, guys, I've just been for a surf, and I reckon your chance of fitting this bad boy into either of these is slim to none. Oh, nice of you to join us again, Tim. I reckon that sounds like a great next challenge, Teagues. It is another challenge. This is the surfboard in the boot challenge. Let's try it in the Fiat. Okay, Teagues, the Fiat might be tiny, but it has a trick up its sleeve. Oh, hello there. <laughs> you can actually fold down the rear seat of this thing. So when you do that and open the back. Oh, the boot. Oh, it won't oh. let you open it without putting part of the roof back up. But then it pops up for you. It's like uh, rolls of a rolly dog there. It looks like a tent. Through here like that. Oh, we've hit a oh, stumble. The seat's on. in the way. The seat. the seat is in the way. Oh, no, it's not. Teagues has got it. Oh, look at that. Tiny on the outside, but surfboard, we have success. One person and a surfboard. No passengers in this. Let's try the Megane. Okay, time for the Frenchie, the Megane CC. It's a whole lot bigger than the Fiat 500T, so it should fit it in, though no split fold seat. Dunk. So, nah, no oh dear. Oh dearie me, not good at all. No, the problem is those rear seats do not fold at all, so your boot depth, that's all you've got. Engineers face this problem with the Coupe Cabriolet storing that hard top. It takes up most of your boot space. There's pretty much nothing left. But hey, Teagues, I've found a solution. It's not a very elegant one, but because it seats four, ah. you can put it in there like that and still seat two, one behind each other. Two people, one surfboard. You said the rules were it has to fit under the roof, and that looks like it would no dramas. And I think it will be slightly more elegant than our next contender. Oh, I don't like our chances here with the MX-5 Teaks. It's not looking good. Uh, no. No. It's about the size of an Esky, there's no way a surfboard's fitting in there. I think we go straight to the Audi. The Megane trick will not work in this one either. Not a chance. Right, the Audi is another four-seater, but the benefit, it has split folding seats that are controlled by a lever in the boot here. Ooh, there we go. Okay, see so how this, you go with the board. this should fit through, unlike I'll in help. the Megane, which is cool. Let's see, seat folded. Will and the fit? front seat flips forward Ooh, and slides. Maybe just. Oh, look at that. A four seat convertible and you can close the boot. I think we have a winner, Teagues. And what I really love about this car is that you've got four seats. So you can flip the seats up. You can have four people in it. You well, Dan celebrated fitting an object I don't think he'd ever seen before into the Audi. I headed for the Fiat. It's a warm day. There's plenty of sunshine, and I think the sun might be getting to his head. 
I'm gonna say when I first saw the feed, I thought, oh my God, someone stuck a tent on the back of it. That little fold up rolly thing. But when you get in it, it does feel like you're driving a convertible just with a bit more wind protection. And did you know, Teagues, that this Mazda MX-5 actually predates the iPhone? <laughs> it's so old, it doesn't have Bluetooth audio streaming, but it does have a six CD stacker. So oh, awesome. Uh, what I have found interesting about this Mazda is I had tarred it with that old midlife crisis brush, but it's really not what you think it is. It's quite fun. It's always had image issues, this I car, know. but hopefully the new model will address that because it doesn't deserve it. It's oh. so much fun, this thing. The new one does look amazing. Now, right. Teagues, this car, this Megane CC is slower than a wet week. This is a 60 zone. Let's just see from this intersection how long it takes you to get to 60. Let's, let's, right. let's see. I think Ready? we're clear for traffic. One, two, three, go, go, go. four, five, Six. Yeah, Six seconds to get to 60 kilometers an hour. The problem I think is when you've got something like the Audi that's a very similar size, and price-wise, this is not that much cheaper. I think the price point needs to be a bit lower. Now diesel convertibles have never made any sense to me, Teagues, because all the work that engineers put in making the diesel quieter through the firewall, you just take the roof off and you hear all that diesel noise. But yeah. this A3, is so smooth and quiet as a diesel, do you think? It's very, very quiet. It's like a little mouse. Well, I think we are starting to go just a little bit tropo out here in the sun all day. It is Friday, the weekend's on the way. Which one are you taking home? Well, I think Teagues, I can rule out the Fiat first up. It's fun, but a bit small. The Renault is very heavy and slow. The A3 does everything better, but the driver's roadster for me, the MX-5, it's the one I'm taking. What about you? Well, I was surprised at how much fun it was to drive the Fiat and the Mazda, but they're a little bit small for me. It comes down to the Megane or the Audi. The Audi wins out because of the practicality of those split-fold seats, and it's just a bit more my flavour, I think. What a perfect day to be testing convertibles. I'm going to go for a swim. Well, you might find Tim down there, Teague. Since I'm taking the Mazda, I might head home via a couple of mountain passes. What a beautiful way to start the weekend.